here at Frenchman Cooley, there's a series of columns known as the feathers because you can just walk between them. Just a row of single columns that are a meter and a half to two meters wide. These things go up uh, probably five meters, maybe 10 meters. And what's interesting here is that we have a little bit of variation between these smooth surfaces and a lot of hackly kind of horizontal jointing in these columns. And I think that kind of exemplifies one of the things I wanted to talk about, which was how exactly columns form. What I want to show here is that there's a lot of intersecting straight lines on this thing and how that forms relates to the cooling of the basalt. I'll get to the hackley jointing in a moment, but first kind of the smooth-sided faces of these basalts columns. If you look at the definition of a basalt column, it forms by the compressional cooling or shrinking cooling of a massive basalt that's insulated, so it's very slow. And if you read that description, you might just think that they kind of pop out of each other, forming these six-sided hexagons in an ideal world because that's the most efficient cooling shape where it's the least surface area. What actually happens is that there's two cooling fronts at the top and the bottom, uh, where the bottom is cool because it's there before the basalt gets emplaced. But you get these cracks that form at both the top and the bottom. They slowly meet up as the unit cools all the way through, as it reaches some sort of threshold where it contracts enough to break away from the surrounding rock. This is actually how you get curved columns, where if you have a flat surface of a massive flood basalt, and then a valley or something that's been eroded out, the cooling front is on that curved surface and the crack will form over on this side, joint uh, perpendicular to the cooling front or the cooler surface and a horizontal cooling crack here. And then as they cool, they slowly, cr they slowly curve to meet each other. And so it isn't just a single process that happens that these curved columns just pop out and are magically formed in a single event, they are slowly formed over time as these basalts cool. In some areas, you get what's known as French fry columns, which is a term from Dick Sentner. And those actually form by the variation in cooling regime between elastic and inelastic cooling. If you think of it kind of like toffee, if you pull it apart slowly, it'll stretch a little bit before it breaks apart. Whereas if you pull really fast, then it might just snap apart. And so you get these little riffles from the slow cooling, and then the straight lines are the fast breaks that just form a very stark contrast between the columns. And that is a cyclical nature in a lot of those basalts where it's elastic for a little bit and all of a sudden inelastic because of some change in the cooling regime. Another way to think of the French fry analogy, besides toffee, is if you think of mud cracks, where those actually form wider cracks at the top and then narrow down into more of a V at the bottom. And that's because they you know, shrink more at the top than at the bottom. Near the bottom, it still wants to shrink, and so it kind of pops apart there. Now, when it comes to these hackley joints, like on the Rosa member here of the Wanapum basalts. I saved this for last because it's actually a little less straightforward how they form. There's actually a little bit of debate about it. One of the leading causes is thought to be that the crystals within the basalt actually line up with the slow cooling uh, to form these essentially layers of crystals that form weak planes that break apart. Look at these guys, it almost looks like bricks where it's like that, and there's a little bit of, you know, pinching out, but that may be from the plagioclase grains that are in the rosa basalt. If we look closely at the rosa, there's plagioclase grains. This is a porphyritic basalt. And so there is quite large, uh, there are a few large crystals in here that could line up and form planes of weakness if they settle out into to layers. And there are reports of uh, Kilauea iki where there was a lava pool there that was tens of meters deep, I think. They put some seismic recording device on there 
there were actually thousands of pops that they described as the distant sound of a quarry exploding, or like a quarry quarrying explosion. Five, ready, here we go. Fire in the hole. Whoa! What? And that's all those micro cracks forming as the basalt popped apart as it cooled down through this lava lake. And so if you look at if you look at this expanse in Frenchman Cooley, can you imagine the cacophony of noise that would have been going on as these basalts cooled?